Hi friends! In a previous video, I offered up 10 tips that I thought might be helpful for figuring out if you're non-binary. But in this sequel to that video, I want to ask you 10 questions that people of any gender might find helpful as they navigate the unique and beautiful challenge of questioning who they are. Hello everyone, welcome back. My name's Maddie, and here on this channel, we make videos about LGBT issues, mental health, and anything else we think is relevant and exciting. If that sounds like your cup of tea, consider subscribing and consider supporting us on Patreon. Links in the description below. So about two and a half years ago, we uploaded a video to this channel called 10 Signs You Might Be Non-Binary. And if you've been subscribed to this channel for any period of time, you're probably familiar with it. It's by far the most popular video on this channel. And for the longest time, I told myself that I'd never make a sequel to that video, mainly because I didn't think I had anything else to say. Like, I'm no longer certain that I'm non-binary, so why should I give advice on what it means to be non-binary? I recognize that it's a flawed way of thinking, but nevertheless, here we are. But then I realized, regardless of my own gender identity, I can definitely give advice to gender questioning folks, especially since I'm questioning my gender myself. So that's what this video is going to be, except this time, instead of giving tips and guidelines, I'm going to invite you to ask yourself a few questions that might help you understand yourself a bit better. To be clear, I'm not a gender therapist. I'm a religious leader in training, trying to do my best to educate based on my experiences as a black neurodivergent trans woman living in America. As such, nothing that I say in this video should be taken over the word of a mental health professional who's been trained to work with trans people in a welcoming and accepting way. Also, while this video is aimed specifically at people questioning their gender, I think these questions could be helpful for anyone. Even if you're 100% confident in your gender identity, you might discover something new about that identity. No matter where you are in your journey, you're welcome in this space today. And now, let's get started. So the first question I invite you to ask yourself is, am I relying on stereotypes about what I think it means to be male, female, or non-binary? I want to put this one first and foremost because one of the most common criticisms I get from people is that I'm just reinforcing gender norms when talking about trans identity. And I don't think that's true, but it does encourage me to make it clear in my videos that gender expression and gender roles do not equal gender identity. You do not have to be masculine in order to be a trans man. You do not have to be feminine in order to be a trans woman. You do not have to be androgynous in order to be non-binary. Gender identity has literally nothing to do with your hobbies, your fashion sense, your romantic interests, your personality, or anything else like that. Gender identity is your internal sense of knowing, or in some cases not knowing, who you are. Everything else just complements that internal sense of identity. So as you question and explore, just remember that masculine women and feminine men exist, and you are allowed to express your gender identity in unexpected ways. Since I just mentioned attraction in my response to question one, I think question two ought to be, does who I'm attracted to complicate my understanding of my gender identity? For those of you who don't know, heteronormativity is the assumption that people are straight or heterosexual by default, and this flawed assumption definitely has an impact on trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming people. For example, I've always been attracted to women and femme people, so when I presented as male, I was generally considered straight, or at least straight-ish. But when I came out as trans, some of my family members incorrectly thought that I was announcing my attraction to men. And believe me when I say that they were quite confused as to why I would tra transition and become a lesbian. But the truth is, I'd been identifying with lesbians in the media since middle school for reasons that I didn't understand until I was in my 20s. What I'm trying to get at is the fact that most of us have a tendency to rely on heteronormativity from time to time, and that can result in confusion when the people we're attracted to and our gender identity don't seem to match up for whatever reason. But I think the important thing to remember is that you can be trans and straight. You can be trans and queer. Likewise, you can be cis and straight or cis and queer. I know that some transphobes like to think that trans people transition to avoid not being straight, but like, I ended up being 10 times gayer after I came out. So yeah, if the people you're attracted to are getting in the way of you understanding who you are in terms of gender identity, just remember that people of any gender can be attracted to people of any gender. No need to fret. Next, I want to ask a question that may seem a bit uncharacteristic of me, but I promise there's a reason for my asking this. Question three is, 
pretend like life is a video game, you're creating your character, and you only have two gender options, male and female. Which do you choose and how does it make you feel? I've gotten the there are only two genders comments on my videos a ridiculous number of times, so the idea of even using their logic even as a hypothetical makes me feel gross. But hear me out. If we did live in a world where there are only two genders, which would you pick and how would that decision make you feel? For cis people and binary trans people, this is a pretty easy decision. You choose the option that you identify with. But what if you aren't satisfied with either option? Well, there's a good chance you might be non-binary. And there's also a possibility that you potentially have unresolved issues with one or both of the binary genders. Is it more likely that you're non-binary? Probably, but it's best to consider all the possibilities. And does having an issue with one or both of the binary genders mean that you can't also be non-binary? Of course not. But at the end of the day, the more you know about who you are and why you identify the way you do, the better. Conversely, what happens if you would enthusiastically choose one option over the other and be perfectly happy with it, but you also think you might be non-binary. Might sound a bit strange, but for reasons that I'll explain later in the video, that's where I am. And maybe someone watching this video can relate. So yeah, asking a two genders question is definitely uncharacteristic of me, but I think it's worth remembering that any question can yield positive results when we're trying to figure out who we are. The next two questions ask you to think about your body and how you feel about it. I don't go into any specifics, and I try to avoid anything that might cause dysphoria, but if you find yourself getting uncomfortable, you can skip ahead to this part of the video. So question number four is essentially the opposite of question number three. Say you get to pick and choose traditional traits from both of the binary sexes. Which do you choose, and what might that say about your gender? In 10 signs you might be non-binary, I recommended creating a sim of your ideal self, and so this is basically like that, but a little bit more specific. Within this hypothetical scenario, you can be as specific and intentional as you want. Do you want more masculine eyebrows? They're yours. Want more feminine fingers? You got it. These suggestions probably sound silly to some people, but for those of you who have discomfort over things like that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Personally, I would want a more feminine facial structure so that I could rock a shorter, more androgynous hairstyle, but my height is probably more of a masculine feature of mine, as is the fact that I've got pretty good muscle definition, and I'm learning to love those aspects of myself. We're all a mix of masculine, feminine, and androgynous characteristics, but which features make you happiest? Which features make you most uncomfortable? What are you indifferent about? All of these things make up your gender expression, which is different than your gender identity, but also you'll sometimes find that they're related. Might be helpful as you navigate your gender questioning. Next is question five, which is, if you didn't have a body, how would you identify? Because let's be honest, a lot of people determine their gender by the body they have. Trans people are considered the weird ones because most of us say, no, my body doesn't dictate who I am as a person. But like, what if we just didn't have bodies? What if we were these ethereal beings of light with no reproductive organs, no secondary sex characteristics, nothing like that? I think for a lot of people, especially some non-binary people, this would be freeing. A world where no one has to worry about gender would be a dream come true for some people. But also, I don't think that most of us would relinquish our sense of gender even if we didn't have a body. Because at the end of the day, our bodies don't dictate who we are as people. If we didn't have bodies, most of us would still be the exact same people we are now, gender and all. That being said, we place a lot of stock in what our bodies say about us, so taking a step outside of that perspective might be helpful as you try to figure out who you are. Okay, body talk over. Question number six is, does my sense of gender identity change over time? A lot of us tend to think of gender as the static thing that never changes, but as humans we are always capable of change. If you came out as one thing at one point in time, but realized that another label suits you better, it's your prerogative to change that label and come out again. There's absolutely nothing wrong with a gender identity that changes over time. But if your gender changes rapidly, like weekly or daily or even hourly, you might be gender fluid or some variation thereof. Might be worth to look into that. Question number seven is a throwback to the original 10 signs you might be non-binary. So if you haven't seen it yet, or if you don't remember much of it, I definitely recommend watching it again after this video. So in that video, one of the tips I mentioned was that you might be able to figure out your gender by asking which table you'd sit at for a Battle of the Sexes trivia night, and which restroom you'd use if there was a non-binary option in addition to the men and women's table or the men and women's restroom. If you don't already have an answer to those questions, Pause and think about it for a moment. Because question seven is, 
Did you choose the option that felt right, or did you choose the option that felt safe? One of the main reasons why I've identified as non-binary for the past three years is because I knew that I would choose the non-binary option in both of those scenarios, but at the same time, I also know that I would choose the non-binary option because I know that non-binary people tend to be some of the raddest people on earth and would likely accept me as I was. I wouldn't get weird looks as if I didn't belong there. I wouldn't have to worry about not speaking for fear that my somewhat deep voice would give me away. I could just exist with other MBs, most of whom don't fit either gender mold either. But again, is that a decision that I made because it felt right, or a decision that I made because it felt safe? I actually don't know the answer to that question. All that being said, for those of you who made your decisions based on what felt right, congratulations. My guess is that you might have a pretty good sense of who you are. And for those of you who made your decisions based on what felt safe, be that the male, female, or non-binary option, I see you. I am you. We deserve a world where we can feel safe and secure, and one day we're gonna find that. Question number eight is, which gender identity feels the least like me and why? Even if we don't know who we are, we often know who we aren't. So checking off the gender identities that aren't you may be a great place to start. Using myself as an example, I know that I'm not a man. Masculine descriptors make me feel awful. Masculinity and maleness in general just don't fit with my most authentic sense of self. And after years of exploration, I know that that's not me. Likewise, I know that I'm not gender fluid. For as long as I can remember and as far as I know, my gender expression has been fairly consistent all throughout my life, with the exception of OSCD switches, and the topic of OSCD switches and gender identity might have to be the subject of its own video. So based on that, I've already ruled out genders that are masculine of center and genders that are fluid, which gives me a much clearer sense of what I'm working with. Start with what you're not, and what you are may follow close behind. Also, if you find it difficult to rule out what you're not, that could be a sign in and of itself. Maybe you're polygender or gender fluid. Accept the answers as they come, and try your best not to force yourself into the box of your own limited expectations. You just might surprise yourself. Almost done. Question number nine is, how would I express my gender if I were the only person on Earth? In the first ever college course I took on gender, we talked non-stop about how gender is a performance, and so much of our gender is performed for other people. But who are we when the curtains close? Who are we when we're alone? In a way, I feel like this might be the most important question out of all of them, because it's one thing to understand ourselves in light of how others understand us. It's another thing entirely to ask ourselves, okay, but how do I understand myself? But I think it's a question we should be asking ourselves. When the cameras fade to black and you're left alone with nothing but your thoughts, who are you? How do you act? What do you like? Who do you wish you had the courage to be? You don't have to tell anyone else your answers, but you do yourself and the world a disservice not to listen to them for yourself. So if you were the only person on earth, what would you wear? How would you style your hair? How would you speak? Gender expression is different than gender identity, but the two are often related. If you figure out how you would express your gender, that might also give you a hint as to how you might want to identify. And lastly, question number 10 is, you have the opportunity to go back in time and do it all again with the knowledge you have now. What decisions would you make with regard to your gender? Even if you're questioning who you are now, you might have a crystal clear idea of how you wish things had been different, and that could be the insight you need into figuring out who you are today. Some of you watching this may think back and say, I wouldn't change a thing, and I honestly think that's beautiful. Also, I'm willing to venture a guess that not all of the people who would respond that way are cis. A lot of trans people are shaped by their formative years of being raised as their assigned gender at birth, and I think that's such an incredible thing. Personally though, if I could go back in time, I'd change just about everything. I first said the words, I'm a girl, when I was three or four years old, and I wish that my social transition had begun then. I wish I'd gone on puberty blockers as a preteen so my voice wouldn't be this low. I wish I'd started HRT in high school and not after undergrad. I don't know if I would have been allowed to play sports in the late 2000s, early 2010s, but I sure as hell would have tried. I don't know if things would have been better, but I'm certainly intrigued by the possibility of things being different. We're all products of the circumstances that shaped us, and if time travel movies have taught us anything, it's that changing the past can have unforeseen circumstances. But if you have an idea of how you wish things had been different, that might be an indicator of what your identity is today. And that's all I've got for you today. Again, I'm not a gender therapist or a therapist of any kind. 
I'm a religious leader in training and a trans woman who wants to use my lived experience to help other people navigate challenging circumstances. If any of these questions spark feelings of gender incongruence or gender confusion, I do recommend seeking out a mental health professional who specializes in these issues so that they can help you along your journey. All that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more content just like this. Also, if you want to support the work we do here on the channel, please consider supporting us on Patreon, links in the description below. But most importantly, remember that you're wonderful, and that the world is a better place because you're in it. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!